Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Manisha Vadva from Aditi Mahavidyale, University of Delhi. Today's topic of presentation is environment as an aspect of learning. In your earlier classes or earlier presentations, you must have read what environment is. To begin with a brief summary of environment, it is the world around us. It starts from ourselves moving to family, then moving to community and then moving to world around. It is both biotic and abiotic component of the environment that is it is both living and non-living things around us. It is derived from the French word envire which means to encircle or surround. Thus all that surrounds us or the world around us is the environment. It is integration of different aspects like natural environment and socio-cultural environment. It includes natural environment includes all the abiotic factors around which are air, water, soil, rocks and landforms. Natural environment along with abiotic factors also has biotic elements or biotic factors. Biotic factors are plants, animals and microorganisms. And also there is an interdependence of all these biotic elements that is plants, animals and microorganisms. They all have you know they have interdependence with each other and secondly they all require air, water, soil and other nutrients for their growth. So all components of natural environment are dependent on each other. Then we have human made environment that is the environment which is made by us or I should say that environment which is twisted by humans for our own requirements like in earlier times we have a lot of forest coverage which we have cut for our own you know agricultural land for building buildings for building roads. So we are disturbing the natural environment and creating this human made environment. Yes, purpose is to provide goods and services to humans, but at what cost? One has to be thinking about it, one has to be cautious about it. But in brief, for this perspective of this paper, I can say that human environment includes roads, building, industries, factories, dams and other structures which provide goods and services to humans. Then comes the socio-cultural environment. Socio-cultural environment, we have individual, family, community, religious groups, educational institutions, economic and political institutions. All these made our, you know, part of our social environment. Starting from the individual to family, family is living in a community, community belongs to a one particular religious group. So, this is a one continuous whole, individual, family, community and then the religious group and I can also say that individual, family, community, then community is living in a state, state is a part of a country and the world around. So this is one kind of a whole and individual is also going to educational institutes, economic and political institutes. So all these include our socio-cultural environment. It is usually from the family that most key activity of societies are carried out and one learns to live as a member of the society. Culture is shaped by the natural environment and the interactions between individuals in a community. Culture differs from community to community and society to society. A person who is living in one particular community have different food habits, have different living dressing sense than the person living in another culture. So culture is one whole and person belonging to one culture is different from person belonging to other culture. Our cultural characteristics like the food we eat, the clothes we wear, our traditional norms and customs are shaped by our you know, culture. So there is a socio-cultural environment. The values, tradition, norms, customs, art, history, folklore practiced and followed by communities of individuals 
make up the socio-cultural environment. So in a nutshell, environment is everything that surrounds us and we are part of the environment. I, in the earlier presentation also, I have tried to explain that how one particular concept is observed through different aspects of the environment. To elaborate it more, let us say water. Now water from the natural aspect, I will say that properties of water, bonding of water or uses, you know, use of water as life form. Properties like solubility, properties like floating, properties like density, these all include, you know, natural aspect of water. Then cultural aspects, we can say that festivals related to water, what kind of cultural practices we follow, this is the cultural aspect. Let us come to the historical and geographical aspect. We can say the traditional water systems, traditional water systems in forts in India, mapping of water resources, this come from the history and geographical aspect of water. We can also say that irrigation practices followed by people in our country are also geographical aspects. Then come the socio-economic perspective like excess and distribution of water. How is water distributed? Is, you know, excess of water is there for everybody? Is it true? One has to think about it in a deeper sense that whether water is available to all or not. There are some people in, in our country, they have water coming through pipes, through taps in their houses, but there are other people, those people they have to walk to a tanker to get water. And there are other people living in desert area, those people have to walk kilometers to get water. So you see that excess of water is also not same. So one has to analyze and think critically about these things. And as you see that individual or any student start from, from her home that how do I get water? How do my neighbor get water? How do a children living opposite to school get water? How do children living in other states get water? What happens to children living on coast, coastal areas? Do they have access to drinking water or not? What is their source of drinking water? So you see that any aspect of a concept is understood from different aspects. Moving further to environmental aspects, we, when we are talking about you know, what causes water pollution, are these factories creating problem for us? Are these factories, you know, dumping their waste water in the rivers or uh, any canal is a problem for us? So one has to see, think and critically analyze. Then what should we do for conserve water? Is sources of fresh water limited or unlimited? Should, is there any need to conserve water? Or we can, you know, have numerous, we can use as much water as we want. So all these questions come to our, our mind when we think of a concept from different aspects. Like there may be some children who don't have access to water in their homes. Imagine and there are other children who are playing water games. So look at the kind of access to water. Then coming to the health aspect of water, like water, there are also water born with disease. Water is source for other diseases. If there is dirty water, then mosquitoes also breed and then we have problems like diseases like malaria and dengue. If we, if we drink unhealthy, unclean water, then we are, you know, affect, then we may be affected by typhoid or jaundice kind of diseases. So there are some diseases which are transmitted to water. So the, you know, health aspect is also there. The point which I am trying to raise through this integrated uh, web is any is that that any concept is understood from different aspects and children coming in my class they have you know they are coming from different families different communities so they have different kind of understanding of any particular concept for example if any child is coming from bombay so they may be following the some customs which are not followed by any other child living from any living in any other city. So it is important 
to see that how a particular child perceive that concept. So, as a teacher, you should have a complete and clear understanding of a concept from different aspects. Now, elaborate further, elaborate further on this. Let us say water and environment. What kind of questions come to your mind? That where does water come from? What is the source of water in your home? Is it tap? Is it well? Is it river? Or what you have to find out? How are seas, oceans, rivers formed? How are our local water resources? Why do wells dry up? How do hand pumps work? What is the principle on which hand pumps work? Is it a good idea to take ground water? Are big dams more beneficial than small dams? How do people in desert area procure water? What causes drought? So, you see that by these questions, I am answering some questions by different aspects of water. Let us say that when I am talking about how do water come to our house. So, I am looking at natural sources of water. What are the natural sources of water? Sources are river, lakes, sea and underground water. Now, when I am saying that how do hand pumps work? Do you have hand pump at home? So, is it a good idea to use underground water? Is it your right to take that water? Or is it a, you are taking water from a common pool? Because you have a hand pump, so you can use it. That does not mean that that water belongs only to you. It is a common pool. Then water resource mapping, uh, looking at regional level, local level, national level, what is the condition of water. Then relationship between natural and man-made sources of water, that there are some natural sources of water and there are some man-made sources of water. Understanding that water table hand pump system of irrigation has environmental impact of big dams. If we keep on using this underground water, ultimately water table will you know fall down and it will have a problem for everybody, not only for us, but for everybody. Then water in different ecosystems, how is water there in different kinds of ecosystems, in grasslands, in deserts, what is the condition of water, water sources in desert areas, water sources in mountain regions, droughts and floods, they are again you know because of water. So, if a child is coming from an area where he has seen drought, another child coming from an area where she has seen flood. So, both have different experience of water. So, the same concept will have different meaning for both the children and one has seen scarcity of water, one has seen disaster because of excess of water. So, you see that if both children are there in the class, then as a teacher, you have to take both the things and enough of water is also bad and scarcity of water is also bad for us. Now, coming to the social aspect of water, then who controls the village well? Who fetches water? When someone has to go and fetch water, then who is that person? Is it the man of the family or a woman of the family? So, who fetches water? Do we have enough water? Why is clean water essential for drinking? So, different aspects which are addressed by such questions are, you know, aspect of caste and class. Who has this access to water? Are there different wells according to the caste and class? One has to see, one has to observe carefully and you will find out that even today there are some certain areas in India where some particular wells are for some particular caste. People from other castes are not allowed to take water from that. And you know we say that water is a resource for everybody. So is it true for everybody? Then coming to the next point purity and pollution control over water resources. How do we control you know pollution like industries are dumping waste waters into canals. So, how can we control? Then coming to the next point is the gender division of labor and availability of water. That mostly we have seen that women fetch water. So, if, if a woman is fetching water, what does it mean you know in terms of gender? Why is that she is the one who is fetching water every day? So, there is some hidden, you know, hidden uh, aspects which are observed only through such uh, practices. Then local and regional conflicts over drinking water and irrigation water. 
you must have read about Kaveri water dispute, which is in news. And even there are times when Haryana also refuses to give water to Delhi. So, these are regional conflicts over water, over drinking water, over irrigation water. So, water as a market force. So, water is important as a market force. Then coming to other aspects, health, body's need for water, right to portable clean water, then water bone, bone diseases and then water and the environment. So, let us take another example of different aspects of environment. I am taking the example of trees. So, let us say what are the physical aspects. I am teaching a concept of tree. So, children coming from different backgrounds will have different kinds of experiences and probably, probably you know after thinking about so many things, there may be a child who has experienced something which I am not aware of. So, a teacher has to be always of open mind to accept some new things. Coming to this example of uh, you know trees. Now, if, if I am saying the physical aspects, so physical properties, what is the length of the tree? What is the pattern of leaves? What is the venation of leaves? Is it straight? What is the texture of leaf? What is the size of leaf? What are the kinds of roots, shoots or, or fruits in that plant? Then biological aspects, key uh, plants are important for photosynthesis. Plants are the source for clean air. The photosynthesis process gives us oxygen. So, a question for you, does photosynthesis occur always or is it during the day or it does not happen overnight? So, think about it. So, this kind of, you know, children they ask such questions. So, taking any concept, you should also clear your own concepts. Then moving further, endangered plant. There may be some plants which were present earlier, but now they are not there. So, endangered plants, plants like pitcher plants, they were there, but now it comes under, under the category of endangered plant. Then historical aspect that how the forest cover has reduced over a period of time. What are the various factors which, which causes this reduction? Why do people cut forest? What are the various reasons? Then geographical aspect, the different types of irrigation practices followed in our countries, like in our country, like some people they use underground water, some people are dependent on rainwater, then some people they use drip irrigation. Then other geographical aspect is that cutting of trees also causes pollution. The rising population demand for more clear, cleaner air, but because of the rising pollution population, there is increase in number of vehicles, which is causing pollution. To, uh, you know, to accommodate all vehicles, we are making roads wider, we are making highways wider, two-way highways, we are cutting forest to make wider roads. So, this is again a geographical aspect that is it essential to cut trees? So, what are the measures one should think of that even without cutting trees, how can we make, you know, situation or life conditions easier for people living in a country? What are the other alternatives? Where we can go, grow trees? If we are cutting trees, are we growing any alternate trees? If growing, where are we growing? Where, where is the land for growing those trees? Then economical aspects, like some people they are encouraged to grow cash crops, a crop like Jetropha, which is used for, you know, producing oils. Uh, as we know that even oil is a resource and it is limited, it will finish. Imagine a situation when there is no oil. So, all our vehicles, most of our vehicles will stop. Vehicles running on diesel, running on petrol, running on CNG will stop if there is no oil. So, only vehicle running on uh, electricity will be there. So, we need oil. For oil, what are the alternates? If, if there is no petroleum, what is the alternate? So, uh, scientists have found that this plant, extract from this plant can be used to create a fuel, a, petro a kind of fuel which, which help us other cars to run. So, can India grow cash crops? 
do we have sufficient food reserves can we afford to you know in, in, afford to not grow wheat and rice and grow cash crops so these are the kinds of aspects we consider in a wider sense then coming to the socio cultural aspects that customs related to trees like worshiping a particular tree giving water to a tree every day these are the customs or traditions we follow and it comes from our socio cultural aspect let's summarize what we have done in this class that one that environment is complex and dynamic system it includes natural human made economical political historical geographical and socio cultural aspects what what do these aspects means these aspects mean that any concept is linked to different subject areas and that subject area determine the aspect like for example i have taken in this presentation i have taken example of water and have taken example of trees and in those examples when i am taking of natural aspect i am talking about you know in case of trees i am talking about size of trees number of trees leaves in a tree what kind of pattern of leaf is there what kind of pattern of root is there so i am talking about natural aspect of trees similarly natural aspect of water is properties of water properties of water means whether you know solubility whether sugar dissolves in water or not what is the color of water how what is the ph of water is water uh, you know essential for life to why is it essential for life so i'm talking about natural aspect of water similarly if i go into chemistry then i'm talking about bonding that what kind of bonding is there between hydrogen and oxygen why do we need two hydrogen to bind with one oxygen what kind of bond is there is it a covalent bond or, or some other bond so this is the natural aspect i'm talking about natural and physical aspects then i am also talking about what are the sources of water are there natural sources like river or you know river or underground water or rain or some other sources like tap water it is you know through pipelines water is coming to our homes so i am talking of different aspects in a particular example now coming to the economy of water consider a situation of a country where there is a desert like so countries like united arab emirates where there is lot of oil but less water do you think water will be as accessible there as it is in india no it depends upon you know how much is available there so one has to conserve one has to conserve whatever resources they have because they are limited number of resources then coming to the economic aspect water itself is an economic aspect if excess of water is there then you know we will behave differently and if scarcity of water is there we will behave differently now water as an economy if uh, consider a country like singapore which which has sea all around around it and uh, sea all around it means it has it has lot of sea travel it it, it has lot of harbors and water is used as a medium to go from one place to another place so that is an economic aspect of water similarly economic aspects of plant i am talking about that trees cash crops should i grow wheat should i grow rice should i grow vegetables which will give me more money if i am a farmer probably i want to have more money why should i be worried about country's economy i should be worried about my own uh, income so i will prefer to uh, buy any uh, to grow any co- cash crop so what i can do is i can grow small amount of wheat for my own self and rest of the land i can use and grow cash crop so is it a right thing so what should we do what should government do to encourage people to grow food crops so this is all economical and political aspect of that particular concept then every concept has an historical background also a geographical background also that how 
you know how that thing has arrived to us what is the condition like now there is less less forest coverage what will happen in another 20 years what will happen in another 50 years so these are the projections one has to see there are we have also seen that socio cultural aspects of what i am also uh, taking an example let's say i am doing a unit on animals how should i plan what should i do children have seen animals all around so what i can s s do is that we can go for an observation and observe animals record our observations we can visit a vet clinic a dispensary where they can talk to doctors or you can invite a doctor to your classroom where children can ask questions you can also invite a pet owner to your classroom where children can ask question so you see that any concept when it is taken from different from different aspect we are taking that concept holistically we are taking it from this different perspective and then integrating it into one whole i hope that i have made this concept clear to you and thank you and see you in the next class